What up, though? This Babyface Ray. I'm working to my episode Civil TV in my neighborhood. I know he's been rapping for real, for real, for like the last 10, 12 years. I've been branded for so long. Like, I damn near thought it was over with. The pandemic made me, like, honestly, like, as soon as the pandemic hit, uh, I had dropped the first EP song. It kind of got me buzzing and people started fucking with me. Dropping all them fiends, got the block hot. It's a big east side, west side thing. You know, you go in different cities, like, it be hoods and separate shit. Like, we, we big on east and west in Detroit. Like, niggas feel like they from the west side or they from the east side. Like, that's big. Favorite part about being from Detroit, man. Detroit make, you know, different different cats. Like, our style a little different. Like, like we got a uh, a different swag about us everywhere everywhere we go, you know? They fuck with Detroit. This where everything happened. Like, I first got, I got my first pussy here and all of that, you know? First everything, so. The rest in peace, my man Doughboy, man. He died at the liquor store around the corner. My homeboy, you know, he used to come sit on the porch with me, chill, you know? Uh, I used to have females come through here, you know? I, Linked up with a couple cats from middle school. We used to all come through and hang out in my basement and shit, you know? Just vibe out and shit. But I had both my parents and shit, so everything was cool. Like, it wasn't too rough, like regular, regular shit, you know? Mom working a job, pops working a job. So, it was regular. They used to play in the motherfucking, um, in the band when I was in middle school and shit. I remember walking home from band practice, one of the, Older homies used to stay down the street from me. That nigga heard some gunshots and shit. That nigga got killed at the store we about to walk up to. My mom and me, my mom, all of us grew up on the, on the west side, but he grew up on the east side, him and my other little brother, Marcus. Hey, what up, baby? What's good, my baby? You good? More focus on music, so a nigga don't really be thinking about the hood too much. I be in the studios and fucking with my kids on the crib or some shit like that, you know, trying to get to the bed. Yeah, I was a good, I was, I was a quiet, I was one of them niggas that was quiet, like, I ain't really, I went off into nothing, man, I ain't, I was a jokester sometimes, but the principal, uh, Principal Andrew, that was my guy, like, he fucked with me heavy because I was the point guard on a basketball team, the star player, all-star game, all that shit, so, I had, like, special privileges in this bitch, like, if I come in late, they wouldn't trip or none of that, like, best card in elementary school was, uh, definitely, uh, being able to be the head point guard on a basketball team, like, down there being like a little celebrity in here, top guy, you know, uh, middle school. I played in a motherfucking band and I played basketball at the same time. I was the only student to do that. So it was like, that was hard. You know, we, we was a traveling band, so we did all type of shit. Like, that's where I kind of got like my music uh, texture from. You know, I was in band in middle school, so. Basically like my upbringing right here was just trying to play basketball and all that shit. Like street life, music, it was never even thought of, you know? It's Brendan Scott, man. Court, this is where I used to drill my ball all the way up to. Way before a nigga knew who I was, anything. You had to just come here and get in there, earn your respect on the hoop court. Shit, just coming up here, fucking niggas up. Older niggas, just being a, the, your little skinny nigga who had mad handles, used to drop that bitch crazy, you feel me? Shoot that motherfucker stupid, like everybody know. Any special moment in high school, that's when it was like, crushing because I found out like basketball wasn't gonna be my thing no more because I ain't, I got cut my ninth grade year and it was over with. Once I got cut, I was off that shit. Then that's when life began. Like I just got the tripping, got to trying to chase all the hoes and all of that shit. Like I ain't really thinking about shit for real. Detroit separated east and west. Like I'm the nigga that kind of like that's the guy right here. Connected the dots. You know what I'm saying? Um, niggas was stuck on the east and niggas was stuck on the west. I'm the, I'm the guy that kind of like. There's not a lot of rappers that just move through their city like this, though. Bro could really move through his city, get love through his city, and it ain't no cockiness, ain't no arrogance to it. It's just how he, it's his genuine person. That's how he can move through the city like he do, and we good. This one just pull up, get all the liquor, champagne, and turn up with the thighs, bro. This one also liquor stuff he pulled up to. Six nights, 365, going crazy every night, getting drunk. Fucking with the hoes, just lit. Stupid. Way before it was wavy gang, it was water gang. So we, used call it, we used to call that shit water gang because we used to get motherfuckers so drunk they needed water. Say, please bring water. 
we a long way from Six Mile right now. We on the west side, we on Davidson. We're face over here at the liquor store, you feel me? Finna go over here, shoot to the little studio on the White House. That's how we operate. On the other side of town, you know? We are at the motherfucking White House, man. Detroit City, you know what I'm saying? Legendary urban studio. Uh, a lot of the local talent have been through here, you know what I'm saying? Such as uh, PZ, Rio, the young OG, Mike, you know what I'm saying? Uh, folks who do many other artists, All Star JR, you know what I'm saying? I think Double Boys Cash out and came through here. We came here, started cooking up and shit, you know what I'm saying? Started making things happen and got a little notoriety and shit, niggas started fucking with us. Now I'm trying to be like uh, the new Motown. I want to make it to where it's a, a creative hub for local artists that don't know that they got talent to come in here and express themselves and put out music that the world can hear from Detroit. It's, it's funny that we in the studio, but this studio don't got an engineer. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that sounds crazy. Uh, we all f figured out how to, you know, work that shit ourselves. We could record ourselves, and everybody picked up on it, and that's how we get our music done. Or somebody might assist somebody else to do that shit, you know. It's a few I can name that came in here, you know what I'm saying, and just did their thing, and it's just, I ain't even gonna say I helped them, but just like kind of like did my shit so they can like follow them, and then, you know, niggas got to doing their thing, and motherfuckers getting paid off of it. So if I could come in here and get niggas paid, shit. I feel good about that, you know? I got an EP called The Last One Left. My, my man Snoop, it's actually Snoop Day to Day, you know what I'm saying, Rose Gold Soda. My man Snoop on there, uh, there's a lot of hits on there that I had off rap. Uh, I recorded Number One Fan in here. Um, I recorded uh, Mood LA in here. I recorded uh, down there, most of MIA season two, you know what I'm saying? Anything I put on the like last, not last year, but the year before that, I recorded in here, you know? I want uh, everybody to know that the White House is something that you can come and put your real thoughts and real vibes to the world. I know he's been rapping for real, for real, for like the last 10, 12 years, but since a kid, for real. When I first heard him, like, I knew it. I knew it was it. He different. Detroit finally done caught that motherfucking wave, man. Like, I ain't gonna say finally because we got Detroit artists that's already been on, been doing their thing, but like, more like the street, the street voices and caught that wave in the world, starting to like, tap in and trying to tune in on what's going on, for real, for real, you know what I'm saying? I knew I ain't never want to work a job, so. With that being said, like, I'm hustling and shit, like, doing shit to make money in the streets, you know? But I was always, I always rap, you know what I'm saying? Well, I just figured out early, like, it's impossible to do music without money. Well, that's what I told myself, like, nigga be rapping with that money, put that battery in your back, you know what I'm saying? Make you feel good. So a nigga had to go get some paper, then get back to the rap shit, you know? My nigga Peasy, you know, he, uh, he used to always tell me, like, nigga ain't gonna never get nowhere if they don't 100% just stop doing what they doing and focused on the, on the musical side, so. I say, I was focused, but when he got locked up, nigga, like, kicked that shit on overdrive for real. Like, started moving around, just stayed in the studios, kept putting shit out, and that shit went up for me. I don't try to uh, keep the same sound. Like, I should drop it. You never know what you might get. So I be playing with different sounds and just thinking outside the box for them. Shout out uh, my nigga Drew the Boss. He passed away and shit. That nigga used to book us at this club called uh, Deja Vu all the time. See, I started off in a rap group, so it wasn't just me solo. It was me and a whole bunch of collective artists. So my first time performing was a group, a group effort type shit. But. That bitch was here, that bitch was lit though, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's when I kinda knew shit was real. Like, damn, they got fans singing and shit word for word. Like, I hear, I took my kids to fucking Disney World the other day and they was running up on me, so they fucking with me everywhere. That shit crazy, cause I remember 
having a local success and then touching down in states and motherfuckers went on that. Like, niggas was acting like they ain't know who he was and shit. And that kind of opened my eyes. Like, man, nigga gotta go harder because we the shit in our city, but we ain't shit when we touch down other places. So, I ain't gonna lie, man. COVID made a lot of shit pop for a lot of new artists because big artists ain't had nothing to do. So they was like sitting down and so I'm kind of grateful for motherfucking COVID, because without COVID, that nigga probably would have never found my ass no cap. But seeing artists just fuck with my shit, you know what I'm saying? Seeing the world fuck with my shit, man. Shout out to Melo, like he be showing me mad love, and that nigga a beast, you know what I'm saying? So Babyface Ray. Somebody like that who on top of his A game in the NBA, you know what I'm saying? They be reaching back and just shouting me out and showing love like that shit. She crazy. I was just telling my brother yesterday, like, I've been grinding for so long. Like, I damn near thought it was over with, you know? So, now that the opportunity here and, like, all the success coming in, like, that shit crazy. So, everybody in Cali, everybody in the A, Miami, Houston, like, we're gonna try to bust a new state open, do some fly shit. First, we gotta run this bag up. Try to stay you, you know what I'm saying? Try not to let the uh, the bullshit distract you from the main goal that whatever you trying to do, you know what I'm saying? Like, just stay true to yourself, self, you know what I'm saying? And just keep pushing. Like, don't even worry about that other shit because that shit had you in a whole different, this social media shit, you know what I'm saying? Had you in a whole different bed. I just want to be a stable in the music industry and make good money, you know what I'm saying? Be able to take care of my people at the same time, but do my work, shift the culture if I can, you know? Like, that's what I'm on. Whole lot of new everything. We, unlit we unloading the clip, you know what I'm saying? So just stay tuned.